Good morning, good morning, good morning. My name is Sean Dexter and I welcome you to the Manga Grow for your daily analysis video. I hope you guys are all enjoying your weekend. It's a beautiful, beautiful day outside. The sun is out, the sun is bright. And hey, not too many people out on the streets today. I think it's because of the entire coronavirus thing. And I, I guess that's a good thing. I guess that's a good thing. But I also do like the peace that comes with all of this. That being said, hey, Bitcoin, with some really, really nice price action over here. Yes, everything is looking really bearish, but so much opportunity, guys. Look at this. These moves are on the 30-minute time frame. A good $500 move. Like, this is ridiculous. This is just ridiculous, right? The ranges that we can play over here, even though it is on a 30 minute time frame can be extremely extremely profitable now i do want to keep this video today short and sweet because i am in a trade i've been trading pretty much all day today so i'm scalping in and out building a nice nice btc account over here and this is what the bear market allows you to do guys if you guys were following us during even let's go back on over to the monthly actually all the way over here right this was opportunity this was the time where you could be building your account not only really low how to play in a very very difficult market but hey when Bitcoin is sitting at low prices that is an opportunity because the ranges allow you to make more money now here's the thing right over here guys Bitcoin was not volatile at all okay not at least for the months that I remember because this month over here December was volatile but these two months over here was pretty brutal Today, at least this weekend, Bitcoin has been very, very nice to us. And let's go ahead and talk about it. I am looking at Bitcoin on the 30 minute. And you guys don't see me talk about the 30 minute time frame, not even the one hour time frame a lot usually, but we will be talking about that today. We do have what does look like a symmetrical triangle over here within which there is a falling channel. And now, yes, you guys are probably surprised with that too. Hey, Sean is looking at a pattern. And um, yeah, I am. But what I'm really looking at is the lower highs over here. Okay, that's what I am looking at. And that's what I've been playing pretty much all of today. I'm looking at all these lower highs. And I didn't take this trade over here. I took this one over here. I took this one over here actually too. So I've taken this one and this one and um, this one too. I did mess up on a certain position right over here. I was supposed to be taking profit and I just completely, completely missed it. I messed up on my execution on Terabit. And this is what I um, talk about guys in terms of um, there being three parts of a trade, right? There is one, the timing. Okay, you gotta get the timing right. There is the direction. Of course, you gotta get the direction right. And then um, there's also the third part, which is the actual execution. So I, w I was aiming to take profits over here. I did not have to see this bounce on me and it happened um, pretty fast and I kept I kept like pulling back. Anyways, anyways, this is I messed up on my mindset, being distracted, etc., etc. And anyways, I added to my short position over here, and I took some profits over here. Not the entire profits that I was looking to take over here. I do want to talk about this though. I do want to talk about my mistakes when it comes to these kind of things because I think traders don't talk about that, and these execution mistakes matter, especially when you're trading throughout the day and you make. You make mistakes because you're tired, right? That is a factor that you need to take um, into consideration. <clears throat> Anyways, um, going back to what I was talking about, um, yeah, we are looking at this symmetrical triangle, and a symmetrical triangle could break to either side, either to the upside or to the downside, right? That's essentially what the formation is telling you. And what are we looking at? We're looking at these lower highs, but we're also looking at these higher lows. So what is it telling you? That, hey, yes, the bulls are stepping in quicker, quicker, and the bears are also stepping in quicker, quicker. The bulls are getting eager to buy at higher levels. The bears are getting eager to sell at higher levels. Who wins this battle? Find out on the next episode of Dragon Ball Bitcoin. <laughs> so yeah, this could break to either side, right? I'm just um, playing the range and the range is essentially a triangle until it does decide what it wants to do. And we do have a measured move over here to be had. I guess you could do something like this. Um, to the upside, we're looking at around 6,500, I guess you could, and this is me being a little bit more aggressive with this, so we could be looking at this horizontal right over here. But if you're being a little bit more conservative, you could take these guys over, okay, this higher low, and what we get? 
pretty much the same thing I guess so yeah 6,300 ish and towards the downside we would be looking at around 4,500 okay these are rough targets though so be very careful when it comes to markets that are being this volatile we could go higher we could get um, sold into a lot quicker but I do think that if we actually break this on over to the upside I think Bitcoin will test at the very least 6,200 to 6,500 I will go on over to the high time, higher time frames very soon and talk about how that does line up that does line up but 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 um be very uh I, to, just to be very clear guys i am playing the bearish side of this because it is just um the safer thing to do considering the trend that being said with a bounce like this with a bounce like this the bull case is very very intact over here because you do not see a 50 percent bounce unless we have actually seen um, a major capitulation or a major bounce but that being said, I always err on the side of caution and I am getting mentally prepared for a move possibly down to 3,100, 3,200 if we actually do come down, test that 4,100, 4,200 region and actually spill on over back on over to the range that we were playing all the way in 2018, right? Okay, so going back to um, what we were talking about, yeah, we have following channel over here. We have a symmetrical triangle. I would be happy if Bitcoin breaks on over to the upside over here. I am um, playing... so. I do have my positions still. I do still have my, my long positions on my um, futures, but I'm playing on a sub account where I'm building a short position in case we do break um, to the downside. For those of you who do, don't understand what I mean by a sub account, go ahead and watch my debit video where I do think I explain um, what a sub account is, right? But either way, it is pretty self explanatory. So, um, yeah, this is the low time frames. I'm just uh, basically scalping in and out over here. Let's go ahead and talk about our time frames over now over here we have the weekly and i do want to emphasize on this this is more important and by end of today i'll be getting out of all my scalp positions before i um probably in the next couple of hours actually whether we break or not i'll be done for the day um and i'll be tomorrow i'll likely not be trading i'll just be waiting for this weekly close we are looking at this weekly 200 moving average right over here um okay cool so we are bouncing right now and living on it not not above it just yet right so the weekly 200 moving average is coming at 5504 and we want bitcoin okay not well we don't want bitcoin to do anything we should be neutral as traders but um i, I want bitcoin to close over this 200 moving average that would be really really nice on the weekly that would actually line up or that would give more credibility to this being the bottom right the fact that we um, are seeing a massive wick like this, 52% wick like this, crushing major levels, okay, crushing um, the 4,200 level, crushing this 5,400 level, and then um, closing above all of it, that would be a good sign, That, but we are not out of the woods just yet. We also do have this trend line coming in from these candle closes. I don't think I've drawn that perfectly. Let's go ahead and adjust that. So if you're using wicks or candle closes, it's not gonna make a big difference because it's pretty much the same thing. And if you do like, this is where you can um, uh, kind of check your bias, right? This is what you do. You just do that, hide the candle that is currently in play then mark out these two candle closes, then bring this out and then just stretch it. Stretch it without moving it on that side, okay? And you wanna see, you wanna make sure that you're not being biased and not adjusting it. And you can see that we are kind of living above it, right? Now, you guys know I do not play too much importance onto diagonals, but this is interesting to watch because it's lining up with the 200 weekly moving average, right? And that is a lot more objective. The reason I don't like diagonals is because they tend to be less objective. But over here, when it does line up with something that is more objective it allows me to be a little bit more confident on what is going on over here so if we do close above this um we may have a freaking massive bull flag over here you could say right something like this <laughs> that's the bull case but hey this doesn't need to break on over to the upside this could do this for all you know so we'll, we'll take it um one step at a time for now it'll be interesting to see if this actually um closes above this the next major resistance does line up with 5957 and um we could like be put it oh that would be really interesting eh? if we do a weekly ascending triangle over here do something like this and then break on over maybe it happens on the daily that'd be really interesting um let's keep an eye on that let's keep an eye on that and i actually that actually does line up with something that Ooh, actually, let's go ahead and look at that. Let's pull up BLX. Let's pull up BLX. Okay, now I might be embarrassing myself over here because I'm not sure whether I 
we are seeing this correctly here. It does look a lot like this capsulation right over here, eh? Right over here when people, hmm. And then putting in a consolidation along the 200 moving average. Okay, I'm just thinking out aloud over here, but you guys are, you guys see what I'm, what I'm looking at, right? You guys see what I'm looking at. I, I have to spend some time um, on this. I don't want to um, talk talk uh, talk any TA that sounds like too much hopium. <laughs> so um, there's enough hopium over here already just by looking at this work. Okay, there's enough hopium over here, but it'd be really really interesting. What happened to this? Oh, this is BLX. That's right. Okay, let's go back on over to our chart. Um, I do want to end this video really really quickly. I do want to go back to managing my position if I do need to get out of it. Um, BDC USD. Were we looking at this chart? No, we weren't. Okay, cool. So we're looking at this. Okay, so yeah, th that's um essentially what. Uh, let me delete this. What we are looking at, guys, on the weekly time frame, this weekly 200 moving average, the next major resistance over here is that um, 6,000, 5,900, 6,000 level. We can adjust just a little bit over here. I'm not sure why that's over here. Okay, that's the real level we are looking at. Okay, so we can adjust that. So maybe we put it in an ascending triangle against this major horizontal over here, this green horizontal that I'm looking at. If we break on, break on over to the upside, I wonder if we put an ascending triangle. Now, this is such, such bad TA. Wow, that actually lines up. That actually lines up. If we actually put in an ascending triangle over here like this, okay, that measured move is going to line up with this next major horizontal over here, 6,800. Now, this is likely going to happen on the daily, to be honest. So, I would actually be looking to sell this. I'd be looking to sell this because it's really easy to manage your risk of this level over here, right? This is going to be a major level. If we do close above this level, we are likely going to push to the upside somewhere around um, 7,500 to perhaps even 7,800. But again, that's all assuming that one, we clear 6,000 and then we actually even clear 6,900, right? So that's a long, long way off. We could actually break on over to the downside. Now, now, now think about the horrible, horrible TA we are doing over here. <laughs> we are assuming that Bitcoin closes over this 200 moving average. We are assuming that Bitcoin puts in an ascending triangle over here. We are assuming that we break on, oh man, this is, this is um, us uh, foreshadowing way, way too much. But the thing about doing something like this, guys, is that it allows you to prepare for situations, right? Remember how we like doing it here at the Mango community. If this, then, that right so you get to prepare mentally for all the situations all the if this is and then that blah 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 so that's that's kind of how um i play it in my mind i'm always trying to think about all situations right in my head i'm already thinking about the situation where we actually come back down to around 4200 um have a little small bounce and then spill on over right i'm thinking about that situation think about how i can play it so you guys should be doing that too okay always think about every every scenario so yeah um that's pretty much it guys we should be just simply watching the weekly over here and waiting for this major major close around um 5400 5500 i do believe the weekly 200 moving average is at okay so let's go ahead and look at link usd and um link usd again we're looking at the 15 minute time frame i don't usually do, the, do this but um, a lot of opportunity on the lower time frames recently and link is also putting in a um ascend, uh, sorry falling channel over here I am not playing link at all okay guys so um i my opinion on this on this um chart this time frame this time frame should be taken with a grain of salt because i don't really i don't have a feel of what it's like to actually be playing link on the lower time frames i don't think i would ever touch any altcoin on the 15 minute chart i do have experience playing bitcoin on the 30 minute the one hour blah 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 on all coins i don't know whether i'd actually ever touch something like this that being said we do have this kind of falling channel over here um i should move to for this would be something on over to back on over to these highs over here basically this candle kind of closer for around two dollars and sixty cents okay so that's something you could look at if you wanted to be a little bit more aggressive um but let's go ahead and look at the daily let's see what link is doing and it seems like we are simply oscillating between this major blue territory over here and this horizontal that we marked at around two dollars and twenty cents if you guys do remember from yesterday's video this major blue territory over here is our weekly zone that we're hoping link closes above right if link closes above that, then we can look for a test to $2.95, which is around our $3 mark. 
failing that i think we're simply going to oscillate between the zone until we break this major level over here and then go ahead and test the lower levels back again at around a dollar 95 and a dollar 50. that's likely going to line up with bitcoin also doing something similar testing 4200 3900 levels okay so let's go ahead and look at the weekly we're looking at this zone over here we want link to close above this if it doesn't um not the best look not the best look but we don't want to close underneath this horizontal here. That's where I think Link is going to see some serious problems. Okay, Link can oscillate over here again. Some some do something very similar to what Bitcoin is doing. Um, something similar to what we are hypothesizing Bitcoin could do, and then later break on over to the upside. And hey, yeah, it'll be a while before you get to these highs over here, unless we see a massive, massive reversal. And hey, don't count that out either. Anything is possible, especially in cryptocurrency land. So yeah, that is um link, guys. Not much to talk about Bitcoin as well. Pretty pretty straightforward over here. The big, big play will be us watching the weekly 200 moving average. Until then, a lot of opportunity to be had in the markets. A lot of um, volatility, right? <laughs> we can play this in and out, in and out. Let's go ahead and look at the 30 minute quickly. As you can see here, we have the Ichimoku. And it's beautiful how well the Ichimoku is lining up with all of our lines, right? If we turn it off for a second, you're going to see that the Ichimoku is pretty much saying that, hey, if we break down from here, we're likely going to come down and test the bottom of the cloud over here. And what does that line up with? That lines up with our falling channel. If we break on over to the upside, we still have that edge-to-edge -edge trade possibility because, hey, the cloud is flattened on the top over here. And what does that line up with? That lines up with the break of our symmetrical triangle towards the upside coming around 5,900 putting in a low high if you actually do get rejected over here i do want to talk about that actually for a second now um, let's turn off everything let's turn off everything um what the bulls are looking for right now is for bitcoin to actually put in a high high above 5991 if we can actually do that then then we're going to likely see a test to around this territory over here this order block which is coming around 6200 you could mark on 6300 as well right so this entire territory over here that's what is going to get tested next and let's go ahead and do that right you can actually mark up this area like this and this stretched on over okay you could do that if you want to i'm not going to be doing that because my chart is going to get too messy i have this pretty much um labeled in my head so this is the next territory that is likely going to get tested if we break on over to the upside over here if you pick on the downside, the bottom of the cloud is what I'd be looking towards next. What we don't want to do is actually break 4,800. Breaking 4,800 would mean a quick, quick flush down to these levels over here at around 4,100. But hey, that is a trade opportunity nonetheless, and we will be ready for that. That being said, my name is Sean Dexter. Please go ahead and enjoy your weekend. Don't let the charts um, in enwrap you too much even though i am a horrible horrible example of that um especially this weekend go ahead enjoy your weekend i will see you guys in the next video